Yeah. Another guy that I have, Patriots guy, Jacoby Myers. That's a sleeper. What is his yeah. ADP? It's his ADP. Actually, no. Jacoby right Myers. Now. Jacoby Myers is like legitimately good. Jacoby Myers is is first off, he's a very talented player. Uh, he's going Wide super. Receiver sixty-eight. Yeah, screw that, bro. <laughs> he could easily, he could easily, 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 easily lead that team in targets. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined, as always, by my favorite co-host of all time, Matthew Spanauer. I couldn't say it without laughing. Um, Theo's not here. That's that's the whole joke, is that Theo's not here. We don't know if he overslept. We don't know what's going on. We don't know if something happened to him or or, or what's up. But um, It's very on brand for Theo to oversleep. That's that is something I will you say. know I, I remember a while ago he was like something's always wrong with Matthew when we're trying to record his it is either it's <laughs> on fire at his apartment or something and you know what I think he's the only one who's missed an episode and this is probably the second one he's missed yeah so he is the only I don't one. I don't want to get any more shit from here on out is what I'm trying to say I always have contingency plans I think uh I'm very good about that <laughs> but uh yeah i don't i don't know what's up with theo uh i will say this the last text we got from him was at 150 this morning 150 in the morning talking about wide receivers aren't valuable i assume he was talking about fantasy he said and i quote wide receivers not a valuable position there are so many good wide receivers um that was at 150 this morning and then he tweeted talking about lil nas x at uh 2.37 in the morning. Well, what's disappointing about it is that, you know, one of the news topics that we're going to get into today is Drew Locke. Uh, he wasn't yeah. named the starter, kind of surprisingly. And that's that's Theo's guy. And that's Theo's, I mean, he's a Packers fan, but Denver is his team that he's been talking up all offseason, and he's going to miss us talking about that. Yeah, it, it really is tough for Theo. Um, you know, we can't just save it. It's news. We got to we got to talk about it. If I could save it, I would. Maybe, maybe we can banter long enough, and he'll eventually wake up. And he'll get. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> be- we can't be in denial, dude. Like, he'll be hanging it. Like, I don't think so. Man. <laughs> you don't think so? What, what are we getting right. into today, though? You know, big episode, or I guess because we have we have technically another bonus episode dropping, so we're gonna get into obviously the fantasy locks and letdowns. We're gonna go over the AFC, AFC East and West for this episode. Next episode will be North and South. Obviously, hop into the NFL news. Got to talk about Travis Etienne's injury, how that affects James Robinson, the rest of the Jaguars' offense. Um, talk about how you called the Rams making a trade. Yeah, and then of course talking about. Uh, Another another one of your guys, Robbie Anderson, and then without Theo, talk about Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke. But of course, if you guys haven't, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a review, comment, etc. All the great things you guys have been doing to promote this podcast on all platforms, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, the works. And if you haven't yet, make sure you follow at Stay Hot Pod on TikTok. We'll be providing a bunch of great content there as well. But uh, hopping into the NFL news, Matt, ETN. He's hurt, horrible injury. Um, I, I, you know, obviously hope he gets well soon. But you know, we were talking about Robinson potentially getting traded. <laughs> but I guess you you were, and then yeah, well now now it's not going to happen. Uh, obviously, uh, the Jaguars are still in a good position, running back wise. Uh, oh, I think yeah, no, they have Robinson Carlos back. Hyde is, is still a pretty good one too. I think Carlos Hyde gets a reasonable amount of work and maybe can be rosterable in fantasy leagues. And with James Robinson, it's really funny because uh, he, his ADP isn't updated yet. So he yeah, slips in drafts, talking. even though, yeah, even though everybody, everybody knows I made a video about this. Uh, and you would think like, oh, I'll, I'll be the person who won't forget. You probably will be. I always yeah. am. Um, so if you're in your fantasy draft, just keep it, that in it mind. Really it's like a borderline like, running back one. I mean, he was running back seven last year, I think. That's what I'm saying. Um, it's like it, it is really hard to like remember that kind of stuff when they're not right there on your board. Um, I, I think the biggest problem for him being a running back one is going to be like Carlos Hyde. I feel like, you know, I think you were the one that said this. He might be getting a lot of like goal line touches. I think he'll get some goal line work. I do. Um, and that's, that's just going to be hard for like touchdown purposes. Because, yeah. you know, you can get all the yards, but touchdowns are really are really going to be what matters. 
I still probably see him as a running back one. Maybe maybe he doesn't quite get to seven where he finished last year among running backs, I but I, I still see him as a running back one. Well, uh, kind of talking about, so Robinson won't be getting traded anymore, but someone who did get traded, and again, you called this, you called this I in did. some way, shape, or form. The, the day after we recorded. The day after the, we the, recorded, or was, or the, the, was day it the day we after up, released? No, it was the day we released. The, like this, the morning we released that episode, um, Sony Michelle gets traded to the Rams. I'm, I'm, t- I, it feels good to get one right. I was really on the money with that one. Um, all, all, I, all I can say is, you know, the whole uh, narrative has been everything Theo says comes true. Like, I got one. I really did. And it wasn't just like, it wasn't like, oh, he picked a game right. No, I, I like yeah. called a team making a trade for a certain position. I just don't think that the Rams believed in uh, Henderson. Uh, and I, I, it was clear because they went and tried to, you know, they drafted him third round, which is pretty good capital for a running back. And then the next year they go pick a running back in the second round. Doesn't bode well for him. So now just yeah. because there was an injury to a guy and they're forced to have him as their starter doesn't mean that they want to give him <laughs> a big workload. Um, yeah. So I, I, I don't know how much I love Sony Michelle just because of like the injury problems that he's had and, and where I, is he I right suppose. now. But I've heard, I've heard that he's looked a little bit... Uh, a little bit quicker. All, all I know is that the one thing the Rams were really looking for was someone kind of shifty. They don't like this whole like power run scheme. They they're kind of more that zone run, you know, let a guy make make one man miss and just get what you can. You know, I, I don't think they wanted to get, you know, kind of a ground and pound Frank Gore power yeah. running back type guy. So I don't see him taking like the kind of beating that would even get him hurt just that, because that, of the way the Rams run their offense. That Hopefully that might be true. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I want to call Michelle a sleeper fantasy wise. No. Because <laughs> of, uh, I, I don't know what his ADP is. I think that um, running yeah. back room you know is what? a little crowded, but you've got uh, Xavier Jones and, and Henderson and, and Sony Michelle. I think they'll make it work as far as like the Rams team goes outside of fantasy. They'll probably be able to make that work. 53rd among running backs right now. It's probably not updated. There's no way it's that low. That's really, it's below Xavier Jones. Yeah, I, I would say <laughs> like, if they just traded for him. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I, I probably don't feel that much different about the Rams. I don't think running backs, you know, have that big of a value when it comes to how a team performs. Uh, so same thing with ETN. It's yeah. a tough loss. ETN's a great player. Um, it's a tough loss, but they have rather running backs. I feel all right about them with the Rams. I feel like, you know, they added another guy, decent staple of dudes there. They'll make it work. Right. Um, you know, speaking of, you know, guys making it work, Robbie Anderson's making it work right it now. It was an awesome <laughs> signing. I really think $14 million is a steal for the Panthers. Um, Robbie Anderson's a really good receiver. He's really good. And right now, because they had DJ Moore extended, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. uh, they've got their wide receiver core locked up for the next three years of uh, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, and Terrence Marshall Jr., who I think is going to be really, really good right away. Uh, but every time something, at least recently for the Panthers, because I'm a Panthers fan, uh, when they've been having these great receiving cores, Without Cam Newton, it has been killing me because for years they had the worst receiving cores in the league. Ted Ginn, Kelvin Benjamin, uh, Devin Funches were all wide receiver ones. There was a four-year span where those three guys were the only wide receiver ones that he had. And now as soon as he's gone, uh, we go crazy at receiver. It's nice to be good there, but now I, I don't trust the offensive line or the quarterback all that much, so it's a little... You know. you know, that's that's the one thing that's interesting to me because I feel like a lot of teams, you don't want to go all in and pay your receivers unless you feel like you actually have a quarterback that you're confident in that can get them the football. And yeah. I don't know if the Panthers have but, that. I mean, and it's, I, I guess, I don't mean to interrupt you, but. I mean, obviously you don't want to let Robbie Anderson walk for nothing. That's But like at the same time, it's like, are you really wanting to go, but, in, you know, spend all this money and then not? The flip side do of that would be like putting your bad quarterback in a bad situation. 
you want to have good wide I receivers guess. regardless. And then if they want to bring in a new guy, they'll already have good receivers there. Um, so I, I don't know. I like the signing. I like the Panthers receiving core for the foreseeable future. I don't know if I trust their passing game as a whole, though. <laughs> hey, maybe, uh, what, what is it, P.J. Walker? Maybe, yeah, yeah maybe P.J. Walker uh, will become like a Tony Romo type deal. Facts. Ends up being the GOAT. Um, you know, speaking of preseason, preseason demons, Joe Burrow is finally going to see the field this weekend. Um, I was talking to Zach, and he our, believed— our buddy- Zach, who's a Bengals fan. Yeah, I guess I should have clarified that. We have a friend that we went to high school with. He's my roommate. Uh, I was talking to him last night. He feels that uh, they're just going to throw him in for like four plays. He's going to hand the ball off four times, and then he's going to go off the field, and that's going to be it. I mean, he'll probably, they'll probably let him throw the ball once. They're going to let him <laughs> They're going to let him make a pass. <laughs> you would think, right? Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm not surprised by how they're treating this just because you, you know, Burrow had a really major injury, more than just an ACL tear, you know, type oh. knee injury where it was it was a big deal. It, it was so closer you want to be, Bridgewater's injury. Yeah, and I, I, I said not. a while ago on the podcast, like they, you know, they are, they need to be really careful with how they do this. So if they throw him in for one drive, run the ball four times, and let him drop back once, not the worst decision in the world. I don't know how he's going to feel comfortable. I mean, because this is we're heading into the last preseason game. I don't know how you go from that to being comfortable starting game one in the regular yeah, we, season versus I mean, everybody they, going they full play strength. Week one? Uh, I have no clue. They play the Vikings, and Daniil Hunter is back. That, yeah, that's not great. I, I don't know. I, I This is my big concern with Bur- Burrow this year. You know, uh, Blayton, because not Blayton, Theo talks all about how he doesn't trust him. But I think I, because of his arm strength and whatnot, I understand that. But I think the real concern from this year is the health stuff. He's just going to come it's back not, and the it's mental, not even health. the mental. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's just, like how it's are all you up gonna, here. How are you going to be ready to go back 100 percent game? Well, I know I couldn't do it. Uh, and considering that Burrow, you know, is, is probably only going to get a few plays in preseason before he has to do it. I just think that's really hard. Yeah, I mean, they, they play the Vikings with Daniil Hunter, Anthony Barr, Eric Kendricks. Like, their front seven's pretty damn good. They go very next week, the Bears, Khalil Mack, Roquan Smith. It's tough. It's tough. Well, there's no, <laughs> there's no, easy, there's no easy games, really. I, I uh, guess there's no easy games, but, like, they go three back-to-back weeks against, like, dominant front sevens. Vikings, yeah. Bears, Steelers. And, and so much of being an effective quarterback is being poised in the pocket and not panicking when you're getting rushed and, you know, being able to maybe take a hit to get a throw off. And you got to wonder if Burrow's going to have a really hard time doing that now with the injury. We don't know. I'm not saying that I know for certain he's going to go do this because I don't know how <laughs> he's going to recover from the injury. We right. haven't seen him play, but it's definitely a huge concern. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. Um, and then... Keep it on the track of quarterbacks. You know, a lot of times we talk about things being disappointing but not surprising. Um, this is disappointing and surprising that the Broncos are not starting Drew Locke. I think the the real problem with it is not that they're, they've are they determined that Teddy Bridgewater is better, I guess. It's like, all right, fine. I, I, like I said, I'm a Panthers fan. I watched him play last year. Not a fan. I don't think he pushes the ball down the field. I don't think he takes risks. Right. But I'm surprised – that they didn't at least give Locke one last chance. Because Locke is the guy on the team. Teddy Bridgewater is kind of the backup bridge filler type quarterback. So what you figure the thing you're going to do is, because Locke has not looked bad so far. What you figure the thing you're going to do is, is okay, this is Locke's last chance. We're putting him in. And if it doesn't work out, we'll go to Bridgewater. But Locke gives us so much better of a chance to push the ball down the field. And he has a more talented arm. So we'd rather give him one more shot to work it out before we just go to Bridgewater. Now you're going to Bridgewater right away. Makes it feel like you've just thrown in the towel on lot. Yeah, it's definitely a concerning situation. And I was going to make a video about this. And then like they started announcing the starters. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm too late. But the way I would do it, right? You know, people were like, oh, you either, you know, start your rookie or start your veteran right away. No, you start the guy who was already there. Start the guy who was there first. Oh, there, yeah, there's a little bit situation. of that. Yeah, that's a good point. You should start you, the guy who's there first because like, if you don't, the then Patriots. that's them getting replaced. Yeah. You, you start Cam 
and then you ease Mac Jones in as you see fit, right? Because regardless of if Cam plays good or not, you're just like, okay, we'll just ease Mac Jones in, right? I think the 49ers are going to kind of do the same thing with Garoppolo and Lance. You're going to start Garoppolo, yeah. and then, you know, if shit hits the fan, or if, you know, you, know, you want to ease Lance in, like, however you see fit, but regardless, you don't just replace the guy <laughs> right away. Yeah. Because then, you know, you sw- when you go to, sw- if, like, you know, it does fall apart and you have to, you know, throw the old guy back in. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, it's like, okay, what are you doing? I guess they know more than me. I'll say that. They've seen him in Canada yeah, I, I guess. and I haven't. Um, <laughs> I'm not I, paid also, to be I did NFL watch coach. Bridgewater and I just thought, I thought it was really disappointing last year. And I don't think the Broncos offense has a lot of playmakers, so I don't think they're doomed, but the quarterback will probably not be the person making the plays for him. Whereas with Drew Locke, maybe he throws a couple more interceptions, but he can You know, I plays. think I, I I can kind of see, I guess, where Denver might be coming from because there is like the idea of like receivers are often able to elevate a quarterback's play. And if you're kind of of the belief that, okay, Locke's super volatile, let's throw in a guy who won't make a lot of mistakes and just let our playmakers do their thing, you might be thinking we can still score a lot without having to be super, super dangerous. The Panthers volatile. offense was stinky last year. And we had, <laughs> we had, Curtis, we had three guys go for a thousand yards and it wasn't yeah. fun to watch. Uh, I, I think that it's easy to say, it's like, well, he's going to keep, you know, he's going to protect the ball, but there's no difference between throwing an interception on a 50 yard bomb and going three and out and punting. Same thing. Yep. Right. <laughs> um, it's exactly and the same. There's just so many. We had eight Trust chances me, at been, game I've winning drives. <laughs> eight chances at game winning drives. We went 0 and 8 in those games. Uh, Bridge with their, and there's just one play in particular, fourth and eight, check down to McCaffrey. It's just, <laughs> it's, it, I, I, I can see that he keeps you safer and he's not going to lose you games, but I also feel like he doesn't put you in a position to win games. Whereas with Drew Locke, yeah, maybe he is, he is, you know, a little bit more volatile, but that can be both good and bad. Now there is also the side of their defense is really talented. Their defense right. is really talented, and that, that and their defense their defense is significantly better than the Panthers was. Oh so, yeah, I'm not. Look, I, I didn't mean to say that they're going to be the Panthers next year. I was just talking about the, <laughs> the receivers. Yeah, they're I, still going to be a really good team, and I guess what they're thinking about is like, hey, uh, we won the Super Bowl against the Panthers with ancient Pey- Peyton Manning as our starting quarterback. So we can, yeah. as somebody who can't push the ball down the field, we can make that work again. Um, but I, I don't know. I'm just disappointed that they didn't roll with luck. I, I, I think that I would rather lose a game or two because of a bad turnover and give myself the chance to go win big games than just there's uh, also kind like, of settle for whatever com- the defense can to compare us. To compare Peyton Manning, even at like the end of his career, to Teddy Bridgewater, not Yeah, not cool. I mean, it, 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 it's, <laughs> like, it's a little different. <laughs> I really Peyton don't Manning's think Teddy's like going to be the that best horrible, too. Teddy's, Teddy's yeah. not that bad, uh, but he, he's kind of like a Gardner Minshew type. Strong quarterback. He's like a, not, he's like a decent quarterback, likable, doesn't really push the ball down the field enough to run a high-level offense, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, again, you know, I, I know everyone's going to bash me for bringing up the Browns. It's Tyrod. It's just Tyrod. Like... I remember. I remember the whole like Tyrod Bills debacle too. Uh, oh, um, when when, 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 when he, he was like the starter, and it was like, him. Or, he led them to the playoffs, and it's like yeah, no. Yeah, <laughs> they I don't like, know. made the playoffs despite him. <laughs> like, I don't think. I don't think this is really that big of a deal because odds are luck wasn't going to work out anyway. But we would like to see him yeah. get a chance. That's probably all. Yeah, there is to that say. that's really all it comes down to. You want to see him get a chance with these kind of weapons, this defense, see what he can do, but. Let's hop into fantasy land. And uh, again, if you missed the NFC fantasy locks, we posted two back to back episodes on those uh, locks and letdowns. You know, so after you listen to this one, make sure you go give those um, a listen as well. I had a, a bit of a blunder on the second set when we were doing the <laughs> NFC North and South, where twice I mentioned players in the NFC West who were uh, not in the NFC West. Or- who were yeah, they the were NFC in the, West, yeah, that we were talking about like the NFC North and I, yeah, I brought yeah. up was it, Cooper Cup and Tyler Lockett. Yeah. Like, I don't know what's not wrong a, with me, man. Not my brightest spot. moment, but 
Let's hop into the AFC East. Matt, who is your first lock? Josh Allen. I've talked about him before. I really like Josh <laughs> I knew Allen. It. I should have known. He's not. He's he was quarterback one last year. He's not being taken as quarterback one. You can get a really big discount on him compared to like a Patrick Mahomes or whatever. He's got great rushing upside. That offense looks like it's going to be good. He added another good receiver. Talking about fantasy locks, I'm I'm usually not pro taking a quarterback high, but if Allen falls to you at the right spot, a hundred percent do it. He's really great. I you know Matt says there's a you can get a good you know much better value for Josh Allen, and even though Josh Allen's be ta- being taken. At, as quarterback two, if you look at the difference in draft picks, Mahomes is being taken 15th overall a lot of times, and Allen is being taken 30th. Yeah, it's so like, you're, <laughs> you're spending a lot it's less. And I understand difference. that Patrick Mahomes is a little bit more reliable, but uh, you're like, it may be a little bit more confident in him. And I, I'm not, this is not bash Patrick Mahomes' time. I think, you know, Probably has the best odds to finish his quarterback one, but I think Allen's got a really good shot at it, and you can get him for so much less. I mean, you can get him, you can get him fourth round versus Mahomes. Sometimes goes in the first. It's a, it's a really big difference. So I, I really like him uh, as a value play. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop right in and go with a sleeper right off the bat, Miles Gaskin for Miami. He's been getting a lot of touches in preseason, and I know that preseason doesn't mean everything. But like when you when you start seeing someone get a lot of touches, it's like okay, maybe maybe regular season they might want to do the same thing, because they threw in oh I can't remember who the number two guy is, but like they're supposed to be having like this running back um, competition. Malcolm, Malcolm, Malcolm Brown, Malcolm Brown, yep, Malcolm, Malcolm Brown. Brown. They not. threw him in for one play, and he allowed a um, he allowed a pressure. Uh, he's he's not going to make the ro- he he might not make the roster. Yeah, um, so people are talking about, know, oh, the, there's a the, running the back game, competition. The game before, I don't know if you saw the game before, he had like eight rushes, nine yards. Okay, yeah. like, he's, he's like <laughs> It's it's rough for him. It, it's and like Gaskin that, and no one else. It's, um, it's why can't I think it, of his mate, name? There was somebody last year who got touches. I know they've been, they like to use um, that receiver. That's like their punt returner. I can't remember his name. Regardless, either. they're probably yeah. Gaskin <laughs> they have other guys, is, but I feel like Gaskin is like more so than any other team a very clear running back one for Miami. Is you uh, know, they may want to go by committee, but I don't know if there's anyone else I would trust more to give the ball to. I don't. I probably don't love other other Gaskin as much as other guys. I don't know. He's just not one of my dudes. I haven't seen him play a lot. He, I do agree thing. that with Brown kind of stinking. They are in a position to give him the ball a ton. He, and I know it's like, oh, it's just a situation. Gaskin's being taken um, as running back 21, which is like when I look at who he's like in the same realm as, like Miles Sanders, Kareem Hunt, and I'm like, you know what? That's that's probably fair if you want to throw him in that. And I'm like, if he's a lock to be Miles Sanders, David Montgomery, Chris Carson, I'll take that. You know, I'm, I'm going to agree. I, you're kind of you're kind of changing my mind here a little bit about Gaskin. Uh, just I just like, hadn't been high on him before. <laughs> Because I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I was like, I don't know how the rest of that running back room shakes out. And are they actually going to give him touches last year? 183 touches in 10 games, which is pretty, I mean, that's, that's yeah. almost and, close and to they, 20 they a game. Throw, they, they like to throw it to him a lot too. Like they like yeah, to get to him. He's got the receiving backfield. upside. I don't love Tua likes their him off, a lot. I don't love their offensive line, but honestly, but that, that's usually like, whatever I was watching their last preseason game. And every time Tua was like under pressure, he would step up and dump it off to Gaskin every single time. And yeah. I mean, that, that's just where yeah. he wants to go with the football. Yeah, 100%. I, I, and he's, I like, he was balling out I th- I in think, camp. Yeah. I don't know. I, I like think Gaskin, Gaskin a lot. Is, uh, is a good pick there. Yeah. Who, who, do, you, who do you hate here? Who do you let down there? Who do you, who do you dis- my despise? Let, my, I don't despise anybody. <laughs> but, um, and it's. It's really hard to think of the letdowns, but I'm kind of not the biggest Michael Carter fan because of situation. Isn't that now, the Mi- guy? <laughs> yeah, I think Michael Carter, I watched the everybody run. I think Michael Carter is the most talented back. And if it were on that team, and if I were the coach, I would probably give him a big chunk of the carries. But I don't trust that to actually happen. If this is supposed to be like a 49ers style offense... He's going to be in a committee and it's going to be a really tough committee. And 
There could be three, four guys getting carries there. And you could be 100% right about Carter being a steal for them. And he could still not produce for fantasy. Now, he's being taken as like running back 32. So, I mean, it's like this is nitpicking, right? Because uh, yeah. he's, he's not a starter in most leagues. Um, but I don't know. I, I, think, I think I'm just a little bit lower on the odds of him breaking out in that running back room. Uh, it's like, I, because I think even if he does really well, he's still going to be in a committee. It's not like there's a running back room and they're trying to find who's going to be the guy. They're not trying to find the guy. He's also get, he's also not starting for the team uh, in preseason. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was Coleman. Yeah. I, you, you said that you think he's the most talented running back in that room. I think it's Tevin Coleman. It might be. I, I, I just, I watched Tevin Coleman run and is really super strong. fast. Like there's like Raheem Mostert and Tevin Coleman are probably the two fastest running backs in the It's NFL. been a while for him though. That's what makes me nervous about him. I guess I shouldn't say. Yeah, uh, Tevin Coleman also Carter's has like inj- right Te- Tevin Coleman has like injury issues. Yeah, that it's would like, be. I, I kind of wonder if if you're in a deep league, if the play is to just invest in the whole running back room, go get go get <laughs> Coleman. <laughs> inv- invest in the Jets' entire. Oh backfield. yeah, dude, just like get a couple of them. Just get like a couple of them and see what happens. Jesus. That he might want to run the ball a ton. Uh, and see, every time I, I come up with a guy I hate, I can start thinking of some reasons because they have P. Ryan in there. I really don't like him. Uh, they have Tevin Coleman, super injury prone. And then all of a sudden you could get into where it's like Gaskin might be the guy who is getting a ton of touches if neither of those guys end up working on. Who else do they have? I know they have one more notable name, I feel like. But I think I think it is sort of – a sort of a, a, a 49ers style room, or at least that's what I've heard. Uh, and, and even it's like, okay, we know Raheem Mostert. We know he's a really talented back right off the bat. We know he's going to be the number one and he's getting drafted as running back 26 just because he plays for the 49ers and a team that's super heavy with committee. So yeah. Michael Carter, a guy who's unproven, uh, even though I like him and a guy who is not the number one running back, going at 32 behind a worse offensive line and a team that's pro- probably going to run a similar scheme. I it's just not a talent thing. Just does not sound great for him getting the touches unless something happens or he moves up the depth chart. Yeah, it's definitely a dicey situation. Ty Johnson is also the other guy. My bad. I mean, our, you, but Ty Johnson. Oh. <laughs> Ty Johnson. Oh, there are other running back. Yep, 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 yep. Ty Johnson. Ty, they're kind of all the same guy. I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> they do it's have. Like, they're like uh, all the exact. Coleman, Johnson, same. and Carter are, are are a little similar. Yeah, they definitely they're, have they're a type kind of person of, they're looking like, for. The, they got all the same dude. If I had to take a guy that I'm not super confident in, I I don't want to like keep to sticking with uh my trend of the last episode, but I keep leaning this like area of like the rookie quarterbacks. Um, what is Wilson being drafted at right now? I'm assuming that's, that's where you're you going, know, Zach Wilson. It, well, I, I, I wouldn't go Mac because Mac probably won't even start right away. Whereas Zach Wilson, yeah, Mac Jones is being drafted 33rd. Zach Wilson, 25. But like, and this will lean me into my next lock, Cam Newton. Cam Newton should be drafted ahead of Zach Wilson. Absolutely. The only reason he isn't is because at some point we expect Mac Jones to play. I'll, I'll say this, right? You're looking at running back, or not running back, quarterback 25 and 26, Zach Wilson and Cam Newton. At yeah. that point in most leagues, you're not even talking about a backup. You're talking about like a third string guy. And I think if, if that's what we're looking at, I will take but, the but dice roll Cam, on Cam Newton uh, playing and being better, and he could easily be a quarterback one with the rushing upside rather than uh, a Zach Wilson, who also you know is, is mobile, but I, I'm not super high on next year. Yeah, it's just like I feel like Zach Wilson, maybe he's – or no, I feel like Cam Newton, maybe he's not a QB one, but, but it, it, you know, especially early on, like first four or five weeks – like that's a very viable. Quarterback, I know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that. When I say quarterback one, I'm usually thinking twelve teams. So him with a top twelve finish among quarterbacks. He was sixteen okay. last year. Pretty much everything went as bad as it possibly could have. I yeah. think if it, the season even goes a little bit better for him, he just plays all the games, which is a big if. I, I think Mac Jones is really seriously challenging for that starting spot. But if he plays, the rushing upside makes him way more valuable 
or at least gives a much higher ceiling than Zach Wilson, in my opinion. I don't yeah. know if I'd call him a lock, though. <laughs> I think he's a lock to be better than Zach Wilson. And, you know, that 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 would be if I could say that. Um, or, like, are you taking Deshaun Watson over Cam Newton? No, but I don't think Watson's going to play. Uh, I guess That's, I guess that makes sense, yeah. And, and Watson's being taken 22. I don't think I'm taking Tua over him. Like, I, don't know. I, I get not being high on Cam Newton right now. It does look like a real possibility he's not. The I guess, week but one. hey, if he if he falls um, to me in the third or in the you know in the fourth, you know, as like the fourth quarterback, you know, so so I, I wouldn't it. say it's a lock. He's better. Than, like it's not even a lock. He plays. So it's not a lock. He's better I, I than don't, anybody. I don't. I mean, I guess, but I don't think Cam just like doesn't play all year. There's okay, an, I, but I, if he I, plays half the games, I, you know, Zach Wilson will probably finish above him. I guess, but for those first days. But like the thing is, if I'm drafting Cam Newton, it's like I'm drafting Cam Newton and Trey Lance. That's my package, and I'm like, it's like a transition. That, that seems right? like a, that seems like horrible, like a horrible idea. Maybe, you're gonna go okay. tra- You're gonna go with two guys who were iffy on are gonna start game one. <laughs> I'm you, going I, like I, I, Cam Newton is like. If you're in a two quarterback league, I like taking the dice roll on him. Trey Lance is like a guy we think will start at some point this year and has good rushing upside. But if I'm taking one of those guys and like uh, just a, a regular one quarterback and then I want a backup league, I want to go with somebody I really trust or not even someone I really trust, but somebody who's been very consistent for a very long time. Like, go like Matt Ryan. Go Kirk like, uh, yeah, you could go. Um, I would say Russell Matt, Wilson. Matt but he's Ryan's too good. probably Matt Ryan's probably the guy. Yeah, super. Somebody, reliable. somebody like that. I guess that's fair. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like he's okay. okay. So here, here's really what I was going for. I didn't want to just because you went with like Josh Allen as your lock, and mm-hmm. I was like, man, you know, I could just say Diggs. And that'll yeah, be like super well, it's a, easy. it's a little boring. To go. I know what you <laughs> That's mean. That's what I'm saying. It, he's it, not it really a lock. Boring. He's just a sleeper. It's kind of, we're kind of yeah, playing sl- it from both sides. Yeah. Another guy that I have, Patriots guy, Jacoby Myers. That's a sleeper. What is his yeah. ADP? It's, his ADP. Actually, no. Jacoby right Myers now. should not be as, Jacoby Myers is like legitimately good. Jacoby Myers is, is first off, he's a very talented player. Uh, he's going Why super. Why receiver 68? Yeah, screw that. Bro. <laughs> he could easily, he could easily, 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 easily lead that team in targets. Oh, I've, the only thing that might take it away is like Johnu Smith, Hunter Henry. Yeah, but, but I, like, I, I really think that Myers didn't he also throw a touchdown pass last year? He might have. I don't know if I'm really counting on that for fantasy though, dude. His uh, singular. I'm just saying, all I'm saying is they like to use him. He has a he has a wide variety of skill sets that makes him yeah. I, I, I don't and know. Use I, I him just, in a lot of different ways. Myers is, I guess, another deep sleeper, but I think I. I mean, I Myers really is like wide him. receiver one. Fan. He's wide receiver one. So probably I, I, I don't. I, I don't know how he. You know, I mean, I get he's not like the best receiver in the league, but I'm taking him over like a lot. And of he's guys he's a very reliable player, um, and I, I think with with and apparently Jones liked him a lot, and I know Cam is is a fan of him as well. So I, I yeah, expect no. him to. Surpassed being the 68th receiver in the league pretty easily, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, who did who's your? Oh no, that was you were listing all the running backs. So who's your other letdown? I just put Bills receivers outside of Stefan Diggs. <laughs> outside of Stefan Diggs, and I'm not even saying that they're going to be bad. I really think that they're all pretty good. I, I just don't know which one. Are they are they going to split targets too yeah. much? Like who's who's getting more? Like what, what's the target split between Davis, Sanders, and Cole Beasley? I have no yeah, idea. That's a you really, probably have no idea. And I have not the slightest clue. And if I, if I was looking at their ADP, and it's just it's not quite where Beasley's, I want it to Beasley's be. Beasley's right around sixty two. Like yeah, that's um that's pretty good. It is pretty. Good. He's at fifty six. <laughs> that's. I would consider it, but because he was he was really strong last year. So, but then with the, but you the vaccine but you stuff how, too that he's been <laughs> having problems yeah, with. And you now producer song is Gabriel play. Davis, and I like Emmanuel Sanders. Instead of trying to figure that out, I'm just going to draft a different receiver. I'm sure that one of them will end up figuring it out and being the guy. And it's like I, I figured out this guy was a sleeper on the Bills because the Bills are you know a uh, good passing offense, but. Um, 
I, I don't think it's really worth the dice roll, honestly. I think I'll just I'll stick to other guys who I'm a little bit more sure about their role or not even them, you know, like I, I think and, all those guys And you guys know what? Good. If one of those guys starts popping off or, you, you know, something happens, free agency, make a trade, like yeah. you'll deal with that when it happens, but there's no reason to really take a it's risk just, It's just really tough to project what's going to happen with that. Emmanuel Sanders is a very strong receiver to add. Um. If I'm going to keep it real with you, I'm kind of going with a different receiving group as, you know, maybe not a letdown, but I'm not sure how Miami, I feel like Miami might have a similar issue. Yeah. my for, Like Will Fuller, first of all, Will Fuller's ADP is quite low, so I could understand taking him. But like um, Tua loves uh, Jasicki. He loves Miles Gaskin. You know, how much is Will Fuller going to be involved when Jalen Waddle comes back? First of all, how healthy is Waddle going to be? How involved is he going to be? I cannot remember that super fast receiver. They, I can't remember his name for the life of me. Waddle? Um, Parker? Fuller? Those are the main guys. Kasicki, outside but they, of have, they, have, um, they have this like speedy slot guy and he's a punt returner. I can't remember his name. Um, but yeah, Parker, like they have just a lot of guys and I'm not sure how much... You know, trust Tua has in them. I, you know, I've heard that you know Parker and Tua have been getting connected a little bit more, but from what I've seen in like camp highlights and in preseason highlights, it's mostly just Sicky and Gaskin, and I just don't know how much that receiving. I mean, court it's the same shit. Really there's definitely involved. a lot of uh, there's a lot of tar- targets to go around. Yeah, well, it's not a lot of targets. There's a lot of people who need those targets. And, I and really like Will not, Fuller. They might not throw the ball that much, so there might not. It might just you know come down to there aren't a lot of targets, but there's a lot to go around. Like there's a lot of people that need. to I think Will Fuller was involved. like wide receiver 24 last year, and now he's playing with a worse quarterback, and yeah. he in a more crowded room, and he's suspended. Right, he's suspended for the first few games. Is Will Fuller suspended? Am I am I totally making something up? I I didn't know he was suspended. He's what? Su- and he's suspended for the first six games. And I feel like that oh my is goodness. I feel like that is a lot to drop about fifteen spots in your ADP. I don't know, dude. I I see it. I get that. Like if he comes back and he is the number one receiver because the talent yeah. is legit. I, I can't deny no, Will, Will Fuller. Fuller's, Will Fuller's is, great. Is, is great. Um, but and this is what we've been saying. I don't know. Um, if, <laughs> yeah, you can, if you can get the value, it's the same thing with Michael Thomas. You maybe, get, maybe he's got Fuller should just be you. the you Phil, gotta Fuller have should everything. Just be the letdown. I don't know. But I guess that's why his ADP is so low then because he's missing so many games. Okay, so um, he's just losing the first game. He got suspended oh, for five last year. Five last year. Now we're dumb. One, okay. Then that, okay, that does make a <laughs> difference. 40 is probably about right for him. I don't know. It's just, I, I really like, I, I think the guys to have in that offense are Gesicki as a tight end yeah. uh, because to be an effective tight end, you really don't need that many targets. Like, you probably need to get fed targets. And I don't know how much I trust, you know, a lot of the downfield Gesicki stuff. Gesicki will probably yet, be a top five it. tight end. And I think before. Gaskin. So those are the two guys that I'm looking to own. Yep. Uh, as far as in fantasy goes, Gas- Gaskin's such a sleeper, bro. Gaskin's like fallen below the radar. Yeah, those so those are the two shares of dudes that I want. Uh, outside of that, the receivers are really talented. It's just same thing with the Bills. There's just too many guys. If I was gonna take a shot on anybody, the, again, the, Bills, the Bills at least you know are gonna throw like every play. It, it is it is a little tough. <laughs> I probably I probably go with Fuller. I'd probably take As, a shot on Fuller if you can get him real late. Yeah, he's so yeah, talented. Yeah, Fuller would be the guy. If there was a rec- I would take a shot yeah, on Fuller. He's so talented. You don't know, you don't know how Waddle's health. You don't know how Waddle's health is going to affect things. That's true. Um, yep. Yeah, you good you point. You don't know how much they're going to want to go to Parker. So I would yeah. say Fuller's probably the guy. Yep. Moving on to the AFC West. Matt, who do you like? Who do you like in this I division? like Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. He is somebody who I'm a big fan of. Kansas City. Uh, I think that he's in a position to get a bigger workload next year. Uh, Hopefully he plays the full season. He had 1,100 yards last year in 13 games. Very strong. Very strong for a rookie. He's on a very good Mm -hmm. offense. And the offensive line has gotten significantly better. They were not a good run-blocking offensive line last year. It should be different this year. Plus, you know, 
He's a second year player now. He's not a rookie anymore. All signs point to him being better. And I don't think he finished that low uh, last year anyway in fantasy. So uh, I'm a fan. I think all all signs point to him being better. I don't know if I see him as quite uh, a wide receiver, not a wide receiver, running back one, but I, I honestly, at low end, I could totally see it. So I, I'm a fan. I mean, he's being drafted at 14 right now. I, I guess that's fair. Yeah, I the like it. Is, I'm down for that. Yeah, I, I guess that's I guess that's reasonable. He'll probably he's almost certainly going to be the lead back there, and you know, I, their O lines you know significantly improved. Yeah, I don't see any reason why that. Yep, I yeah. just all signs point to things being better for him. <laughs> yeah, that's really all it comes down to: better situation, and that's really all you're looking for out of a talented player. It would be different if the talent wasn't there, but it is. They like him. Um, I'm going to go another running back, Josh Jacobs. <laughs> you know, there was yeah, a time. We, well, we watched him at camp. <laughs> is that why you're picking was, him? Yeah. You know, the, just the camp. That's all I needed to see, man. No, nah, but there was a time when I was really bashing on Josh Jacobs. I was like, oh, you know, he, he can't really get it done. Not explosive enough. Um, and you know, maybe that's true for the sake of like, he won't be super valuable for the Raiders, but in terms of fantasy, I think they want to give him the rock. Um, you know, we watched in, in practice, you know, there, there was not a single time when I saw um, Kenyon Drake on the field and they like did something. I don't know. You really, you really don't think that they're going to use Kenyon Drake at all. It's not that I don't think the, they will use him. Right. Um, they obviously didn't go out and get him to not use him. But when I watched, you know, just from what I saw in that in that one practice, it felt like they weren't using him as much as you would expect. And when they did use him, it didn't feel like they were very productive. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think that's probably hard to judge from just one training. I mean, camp. definitely, but also Josh Jacobs, I feel like just is the better. I'm a player. little worried about Kenyon Drake taking the touches. Um, it's it's hard to know. That's that's one of those situations where it's hard to know how they're going to split the carries. I feel like most backfields you can figure out, but that, that one is, uh, but, uh, Jacobs at what, what running 16. back is he right now? 16, 16, right below Clyde Dobbins, right around Carson Montgomery. Like, I think, I think that you think it'll I get think more touches fair. than Carson. How are you mm-hmm. confident in that? Are you confident Maybe. that he's going to get more touches than miles Gaskin? That's the, I, I don't know if he gets more touches than Gaskin. Um, He's, he's above David Montgomery. Are you confident that he gets more touches than David Montgomery? I don't Maybe know. Maybe not. I think yeah, I definitely that's, that's think the situation. talent of Josh Jacobs has become underrated. Like people are hating on him because they he had a, a down year, and I'll give you that. But I think people are taking that and they're they're putting it into like, oh well, he's a sleeper now, and I'm not quite sure if he is. If they give Kenyon, if they brought in Kenyon Drake, I think they really want to get the How ball many to touches him. did Kenyon Drake have last year? Kenyon Drake was legitimately good. So I, I, I think he's just, I'm looking at ADP. He's above Robinson. He's above Gaskin. He's above Montgomery. He's above Carson. I think all those guys are probably in line for more work than him. Although Kenyon I do, last year in 15 games had 264 touches. Well, we're, I'm not worried about him getting touches on, you know, a, a different team, right? Yeah, I, I'm just saying, like. I, I I just am not sure. I do like I do like Jacobs as a player, and 16 probably isn't that that crazy for me. But I might have him like 17 or 18 because there's a couple other guys where I'm more confident or more uh, sure of their role. I guess that's I guess that's fair. Anyone in this division that you're uh, not too fond of, Matt? Uh, Justin Herbert gets taken like really high. And a lot of drafts. Took my guy. And it's not that I... I keep saying the same (laughs) shit. It's not that I'm against the talent of Herbert. But he's getting taken as... I I, I really don't see him stepping up with a guy like uh, Murray or or Allen or Jackson or or Prescott. I think all those guys I'm a little bit more confident in than Herbert. And Herbert is not taken that far by... You know, that far behind them. Uh, like, for instance, his ADP is above Tom Brady. That's a huge ask out of Justin. Yeah. Herbert's That's at QB8 right now. 
I would yeah. consider taking. I would probably take Tannehill over him. I would probably take Stafford. Right. It's. I could very easily see him having worse statistical years than all of those guys. Yeah. Uh, and, and so just just from like the numbers standpoint of fantasy stuff, I don't. I Herbert is not a guy who I ever target really. If I'm going quarterback, I'm either, I would much rather either wait on the value of a Brady or a Tannehill or a Stafford, or I'd rather go a little bit higher with an Allen or a Jackson because I think those guys have a lot better chance of, you know, putting up a quarterback number one type season. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely agree with you there wholeheartedly. Like, not, not even just for the sake of, like, Oh, I don't think he can put up the same numbers as like Stafford or Brady, but just like coming off a record-breaking rookie season, that is incredibly hard. And not even just Those that, are just hard how, to follow up. It's not even that it's hard to follow up, but his play style makes it especially hard to follow up. He's playing very volatile football. Throws the ball downfield a lot. Those aren't always going to go his way. You know, yeah. so, yeah, no, I definitely agree. You might see a drop in touchdowns, maybe an increase in turnovers, and people might ah panic a little bit, but that's just that's just the way it goes, you know. So, no, I, I, I completely agree with you there. I think if, you know, anyone I'm really concerned about, um, man, I, d- I just don't know. Yeah, I, d- I hate to keep going like position groups, but I don't know who to like, like or dislike on the charger or not on the, on the Broncos receiving core. Oh, I, I totally disagree. What Sutton and Jerry okay. Judy? Sutton, I like. Mm-hmm. I Jerry do Judy. kind of like Judy. Yeah. How do, do you have? feel about how do you feel about Tim Patrick? What what do we what what's Tim Patrick's ADP? Ninety. <laughs> no, let's look it up. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? Tim Patrick. I mean, he, again, <laughs> 96. Of, okay. I'm just saying they have a, okay. We I don't know if fan. I can trust <laughs> him as wide receiver 96. What? Who is I ahead sat, of, I sat out of frame. <laughs> who is, he doesn't even, sh- oh, okay, hold on. I'm on. He's like there. in the same, he's in the same categorization as Ty, Tyrell Williams. I, he's not. Okay. Okay. But like he, our producer just put this in the chat. Bridgewater's quarterback now. Do you think that has any implications on Judy and nah. Sutton? Did it have any implications on There's 3,000 yard receivers in Carolina. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm not worried about it. I, okay. I, I, think, I, think, I think both Judy and Sutton will be good next year. I have Sutton as a yeah. sleeper. I think at 32. No, Sutton, yep. Sutton I think will be really good. I'm not sure. I love Judy. I'm not sold on it yet. I was sold on Judy last year and he let me down. So I don't want to buy in yet. I think, I think with Judy, a lot of his, his struggles were rookie struggles. Um, yeah. A lot of drops, so but like, I'm, I'm you, not know, you, too, you too fix those, you'll, you'll be great. Um, I, you know, I can, I think Jerry Judy's a phenomenal player, uh, but you know, there is, you actually, you might be kind of Tim, Tim Patrick last year was, you know, he's wide receiver. A, 40. Patrick, I know he was wide receiver. Uh, Tim Patrick he, had like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I was on a Twitch stream last year, and someone's like, "Hey, Bladen, have you like, he- like, heard of this Tim Patrick guy?" Like, my comment section was full of like, "Check out Tim Patrick, check out," and this dude who was like balling. Uh, like, obviously, it's, it's way different. It's way different because like, you know, Sutton's back, and I, I, I yeah. do think Sutton will get the targets. But I'm not. I'm not worried about there being too many guys there. I'll be 100 percent honest. Not for I Sutton and Judy. A, okay. There's Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, Noah Fant, the ball. Melvin they're Gordon, not... and uh, what, and what and what 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 does Melvin Gordon taking a touch from Sutton even look like? <laughs> I'm just saying, like well, they, we got to get can... like. <laughs> I, th- if you want to talk about the running backs, I don't know who they're going to give the ball to. Fair enough. Um, I no, I think I, Melvin Gordon kind of takes the reins there. That's kind of the way I think things are going. What makes you say that? Uh, I don't know. I just feel like Melvin Gordon probably is going to be the lead back, and they might they might go. Um, I can't remember his name. What is up with me in names right now? I can't remember his name. Um, I have no this idea. Is guy, this is a guy. This is a guy I'm high on too. I like him a lot. I can't just can't remember his name. Um, I don't know, dude. This is going to drive me nuts. I don't think they drafted Javante Williams with a 34th pick. Javante Williams. That's right. Javante yeah. Williams. 
Yeah, I just couldn't remember his Javante name. Javante Williams. That's what I said. You said Devante. I said Javante. You're lying. It's cool though. <laughs> We'll just we'll just we'll, we'll literally. I, I, look, I didn't think that down. I didn't I didn't think that they picked. I didn't think that they picked him thirty fourth overall, not to give him the ball. So, yeah, I, I guess that's fair. Kind of the same thing with Najee. I, I would not be worried about Sutton. He's gonna. It's the other. oh, I'm not. I'm not worried about Sutton. Uh, trust me, I'm not worried about Sutton's gonna ball. Sutton's that guy. Yeah. Unless the the only thing you would be worried about with Sutton is like injury, injury. holding him yeah. back. Getting re-injured, something like that. But outside of outside but of those ADP, things, I think he's totally worth the risk. Yeah, no, Sutton, Sutton will be awesome. Who else are you a big fan of? Big yeah. fan. Of, I, I think McCole Hardman might be worth a look. Uh, with no more Sammy Watkins, and he's he's getting yeah. drafted around where his ADP was last year. I'm not super confident in the targets sticking up for him because they gave like Robinson a lot of the, basically like the same amount of work. But I could totally see a scenario in where he gets maybe 20, 25 more looks and he finishes above where his ADP was. He is the wide receiver number two for the best quarterback. And yeah, I, I, Dynasty, like the Dynasty football subreddit, every year tries to figure out who's the, who's the Packers wide receiver two. Like five years straight because they have Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. You could do the same thing with Patrick Mahomes. Who's this wide receiver two? Uh, you know, I mean, second target's probably Kelsey or you know, Tyree Hill, those are obviously the top two guys. But as wide receiver too, yeah. Hardman. That's a fine pick, right? Yeah. Hardman Hardman is really good. And at some point you kinda gotta oh my God. Breaking news. We just got a text from Theo Ash. Dude forgot so, about so the time change. It's tough. So so for those of you that don't know, Theo lives in Pacific time and we live in Eastern time. So a lot of times we'll be like, oh, we're starting at 12 and he and he'll be like oh 12 pacific time it happens <laughs> it, it's it, tough it, uh, it happens more often <laughs> than we would like um but yeah that's just that's the text we literally just got so he'll be joining um, us for the next episode hopefully we're probably just gonna go for ahead the, yeah for the for the bonus episode he'll, he'll go ahead and hop in with us um, I guess I'll give one more guy that I really like out of the West. I don't know if I would say I really like him. Or actually, no, I do really. I just, <laughs> you love him. Come on. Be, you got to be more confident in the picks, man. You love him. I, this is my guy. Um, Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just, you know, we talk about, especially if things aren't looking great with Herbert, you know, I don't want to make it sound like I'm predicting things to go bad with her. No, no, I no, really no, no. I'm just, not. I'm just saying if you if you see guys start if you or if you see Herbert start to like take a step back, it's like okay, we need to relax a little bit, stop pushing the ball downfield so much. You know, they're going to start to dump it off to Eckler. Like that's that's what you do there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't think he has a very strong backup. Um, yeah, that's really the other thing. They had there's, there's a guy they were going to a little bit last. I think it was what Justin, Justin Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, and he's fine. Um, and he actually he actually did perform pretty well. So maybe yeah. I'm maybe I'm I'm tripping. Justin but, Jackson, um, Josh Kelly. Yeah. So that, there, there's that like somebody the where you're thing. like they're gonna they're gonna take a chunk of his carries. This is we're not worried about a committee there. Uh, and the receiving upside on him is probably about as good as. And any Eckler's being wild. taken at running back eleven. That's good value. It is. I feel if he plays, I feel very confident about him being a running back one and you're getting him pretty low value. Uh, you, you can see him slip in the second round sometimes. Yep. If, if some of those, some like, of those, yeah. If you're at like the 12th pick 13 in, you know, you get back to back. I would, you know, can highly consider going like Eckler Gibson, like that kind yeah, of, I, that kind of backfield be kind of scary. I can't yeah. lie. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Is that the Theo Ash NFL? I overslept. <laughs> he said I overslept. Um, you get 30 seconds. We missed you for the Drew Lock bit. Give us your two cents. I mean, if you guys talked about it already, I'm sure I have about the same thing to say. It's not... It's not okay. It's not the worst thing in the entire world. It's not like they're idiots. They're not the worst people ever for doing this. I get it. 
when we first talked about this podcast episode and episodes ago, we said, okay, maybe with this defense, you just go with the guy who's not going to turn the football over. Mm -hmm. So I understand the logic. However, you know, Teddy Bridgewater, his peak is 15 touchdowns. That's how many he threw at a career high, right? 15 touchdowns to go around. That's what you can expect. Hard to win a lot of games if you're, if your quarterback is throwing 15 touchdowns, you know, that's just not a lot of points on the board. And the point of playing offense, when you get the football and you are trying to drive down the field, the goal is not to not turn the football over. That's not the goal. The goal is to put the ball in the end zone. And Drew Locke, I truly believe has the potential to be kind of Ryan Fitzpatrick tier, to be Jameis Winston tier, to throw 25, 26, kind of that type of range for touchdowns. He has the potential to be that, make a dynamic offense with Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler and, and Noah Fan and all those guys. And he's the one that I would have gone with just because he has the potential to put a lot of points on the board with all the weapons. Now, um, they're probably not going to put a lot of points on the board. And that makes them not having a top defense in the league, which I think they will. And I still think they'll make the playoffs because of it. Um, but it makes that all the more crucial because they're not going to be moving up and down the field with no chance yep. of it now. That was a little more than 30 seconds, but we appreciate Sorry. it, Theo. Now that officially wraps things up for us. Again, we will be coming back to you tomorrow with a ton of more content. Bonus episode. Make sure you guys don't miss out on that. We're so close to the NFL regular season. We can almost taste it. And uh, Matt, do you want to take it again? Or uh... No, you got it this time. All right. We'll catch you guys on the flippity flop. <laughs>